artificial intelligence, science fiction, This is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. This is Brian. We are Alpha Quadrant <laughs> 6, and we, uh, we talk about science fiction. And this yeah. week, we're going to talk about artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. AI. AI is a staple of science fiction, and we're not just talking about robots and androids. We're talking about any artificial intelligence. We're going to be focusing on non-robots, although one or two might creep in. Um, because we have, to, we have to with some types of, uh, of artificial intelligence. So we talked about how to break this down. There's a lot to, lots of different ways we could break it down. Brian, you thought we should just go with benevolent, malevolent, and indifferent. All right, Brian, let's start with you. So give us an example of an iconic AI in one of those categories. Okay, so uh, start with malevolence since it's you know, the, uh, the favored uh, go-to with everything from sci-fi literature to sci-fi movies to video games. Everybody loves their killer robots. Uh, you've got, for me it's a tie in the malevolent category. You have AM from I Have No Mouth, uh, I Must Scream <clears throat> by Harlan Ellison. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, uh, I'm going to go with the Reapers from Mass Effect. Oh yeah. Uh, because mm -hmm. they, regardless of any controversies about um, you know, their ultimate purpose, mm -hmm. it's not what I would have done as a sci-fi writer, but um, there was a twisted logic. It was intriguing. They, and they represented the pinnacle of, uh, of AI development, and they, they threatened the entire galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, and, and that's, that's about wiping out civilization after civilization for billions of years. It's tough to get bigger stakes than that. Sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, have, I have to say my favorite malevolent AI is Gladys from the portal. Gladys from portal, portal. Oh, gosh, <laughs> yeah, she's great. She's, I mean, a fantastic character, yeah. kind of has her own arc too. So she yeah. starts out as malevolent, she <clears throat> ends up as pathetic, and then returns to like indifferent. I guess is where she ends yeah. up. I mean, she did. She did let the the main character go. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah but yeah. but there was still some. There was like a grudging respect there or something. But and like, her backstory. She was partly, I guess, this, taken from the the creator's wife, the guy yeah, that created yeah, yeah. the whole thing. Oh my God, it was such a good idea. And and her, and her interplay with the other AI. Well, Wheatley yeah. is, I think, my yeah. just my favorite AI of all time. <laughs> when, he be, when he becomes bad, he becomes maniacally I know. bad. Oh my God. He starts out as friendly, bumbling, friendly, and turns into like the like an incompetent but malevolent AI. Yeah. And 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 addicted to his own programming. Yes. You know, still right. had to test when he had to yeah. test everybody. It was like you gotta this. Got to test. Got to yeah. test. <laughs> It was great. That was again. They they played upon the quirkiness of AI, that you know it's it's unpredictable. They're also they're indifferent because they're not human. I love that Gladys was simultaneously so malevolent and yet so petty. So petty, yeah, and, right. and <laughs> sarcastic as well, and like was trying to be mean, but because she was a computer. She didn't quite know how to be a mean girl. She was like trying to be a mean girl, but yeah. she didn't quite know how to pull it off. Oh, okay. so now that oh, you I say forgot this. to tell you, you're overweight. Whatever, I just yeah. like really it was too clumsy. Deadpan. It yeah. was very. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize that you're right. She's so epically petty. Yeah. For, yeah. And, and for what? And what is her reason? It's so ridiculous. Right, but that's the thing. Like the we made the AI, humans apparently made the AI to to for this purpose, and they're kind of locked into their purpose, but then. Break out to it, break out of that sorta, of, but they're kind of kicking out of their own right. pro way of their own programming, as you say. It's very interesting exploration. And he, and, he, and laugh out loud, hysterical. hysterical. And, and interesting how they, you know, they, she presents herself as omniscient artificial <laughs> intelligence. And at one point, she's threatened. I know exactly where we are, and exactly where we are going. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Wheatley's great. It's definitely this way. No, no, no. It's the other way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Who voice acted Wheatley? Do you, do you know? Yeah, him? I do. I know. I know the. I, can, I can't remember his name. I could picture the actor. He's a famous comedian British actor. You, you will recognize him if you saw. I him. love. I just love but, yeah, his fantastic. work on that character. Even though even the turrets in that game had their own little oh, quasi intelligence. Right. You're right. Like, you're when, when you eyes. when you would shoot them down, what do they say? Uh, it was like um, I don't hate you. I don't, yeah, yeah. They were, they, they, it was so <laughs> odd. What a weird way to communicate. I, I, I gotta play that game. Good night. <laughs> I never played that. I played oh, the fantastic. game through all fantastic. the way three times. Yeah, wow. multiple times. More than three. If you wait three. a couple of years, you'll just forget almost everything. Uh, so I have, now that we're on Malevolent, I have a guy that, that I, I want to have to talk about. Um, Skynet. 
Oh, oh, Skynet. Classic. Now Skynet is the exact opposite of these characters that we that you guys mm-hmm. brought up. There's no personality. We never learn anything about Skynet. The only way we know is through the robots. It's that, in the background. It's never interact background. with Her Skynet minions. itself. And, and that is so much scarier in a weird yeah. way. It's just like not seeing the shark in Jaws. Like yeah. I, I just love that idea that Skynet did it all. It became conscious. You know, they say, and in, 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 you know, we all know Skynet became conscious at this particular time in this particular day. And, and from that moment, it became conscious. It didn't like for. A couple of years, think about mull things over and pretend not to be conscious. It immediately started doing what it had to do, <laughs> right? Which is so scary. And then yeah. all of its creatures, all of its minions, are super scary. So when we finally get to Terminator Two and they switch them around, then the the machines aren't all that bad, right? Like you know, we, we see a completely different side. And I thought it was just a, a no, they're just story. programming. They were just programming. The CPU is a neural net processor, a learning computer, but Skynet presets the switch to read only when we are sent out alone. But I just love Skynet because Skynet is so in the back, dark, and completely malevolent. There is no mm. way to even get to Skynet. Nobody talks to Skynet. Nobody turns Skynet around. Eventually, in that universe, they destroy Skynet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like it's like the Borg. There's, there's no arguing with it. It's just like it's it's, it's worse than the Borg because the Borg, some of the Borg you get you see the human side to them. Right, we yeah. don't. See, there is no humanity ever, ever. No little bit of mm. shred of humanity in Skynet, and I like that. Yeah. And just uh, on that, too, Steve and I were talking earlier about Colossus, the Vorbin Yeah, project. Skynet is derivative of, of Colossus. And Colossus is cr- yeah. creepy. What is this? Col- Colossus, the Forbin project is a movie that came out in the 70s. And mm-hmm. um, it's, it's the quintessential... It, it was the, one of the very first um, yeah. malevolent AI movies. Yeah. This is the voice But what was Colossus. interesting is America had the Colossus, which is like a pre-Skynet. Yeah. And the Soviets had um, uh, Guardian, I think it was called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so they were supposed to outthink each other. But what they ended up doing is they created their own little language and they started communicating with each other and then they decided to unite, which is a theme we see over and over again yeah. in this subgenre, everything and from Neuromancer to Deus Ex. And they become and nomad? Then, and then they basically take over the world and almost appoint itself as this self-described benevolent god. In fact, at one point, I think the line at the end of the movie is something like, you know, one day you'll look up on me, not just with awe, but with love. Wow. Um, but they scary. basically they had control of the nuclear arsenal <laughs> yeah. of right. the world, and they blow up a couple of cities just to show you that they can. Say so now, yeah. now you have to do everything we say because we have control of all of and your. And what nukes. do they want people to do? They just wanted to take over the world because they couldn't trust humanity to run themselves. Right. So it was that benign overlord, like the robot, the the AIs think that they could do a better job of running yeah. civilization than people can, mm-hmm. and so to them, the benevolent thing to do. Would, was to conquer us. Okay. And in, in, it's the same in the 70s, and even then, this robot, this, this AI was outthinking us at every single yeah. turn. Yeah. This wasn't like, oh, this is on a plug. It was already light years ahead of us. It was 100 steps ahead of us yeah, the whole time. Yeah, all the time. And uh, yeah. it sets, you can easily see, like further down the timeline, 100 years or two, mm. two m- generations later, human generations, this thing would be like a god in Olympus at that point. Is this a book or a movie? It's a movie. It's an excellent is, 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 movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, so excellent movie. Movie. Okay, I want Highly to see recommend it. it. Definitely see it. That, that is yeah. really cool. I like so that. maybe this would be a good segue to a benevolent, but a similar scenario where the AIs have total control. I mean, total control, but they're not malevolent. They're they're benevolent. Who's this? And this is so. This is the Neil Asher Polity Universe. Um, one of my my favorite hands down sci fi series. R- really hard science. Fast. This guy writes battles, like sci-fi battles, like nobody else I've, I've ever read. Love him, love him to death. So in his, in his polity universe, AIs have taken over. Um, humanity created AIs, and at one point, the AIs were kind of thinking, you know, these humans aren't doing a good job. Uh, we got to take over. So they, what, they, what happened was what's called the quiet war. They took over entirely with no bloodshed. Blam, we are now in control. And so you have Thanks. AIs, you have AIs, all throughout society, they could be in a robot, they could run a ships, they could, they could run military ships, or they could run planets. So you've got planetary AIs, and the number one, the king, king <clears throat> queen of, uh, of these AIs is Earth Central. This is the, this is the AI embodied in a, in a probably a fist-sized crystal. Um, they said something, it's, it's atom-etched quantum computing. Who, you know, the technology doesn't matter that much, but this thing, this guy is, they're, they're benevolent pretty much. I mean, they're not perfectly godlike mm-hmm. benevolence, but, they're, but they, uh, they, work with, they work with people, and they're not, they, they don't treat them like ants. They actually you know, will work and do things with people, mm-hmm. but they but are- it's kind of, So they sound very parenting almost. 
in, in, a, a, in a way, in, in some ways, what I like about them is that, I mean, they're, they're intelligence, and it's hard. How do you write an intelligence that's about a million times greater than humans? Very hard to do. Mm -hmm. they, Neil Asher does it in a, in a very decent way. For example, some of the things they could do, they could take you, they could take your mind and run it in their, within their mind at, at 100 years in, in, in an hour. They could, you could live your life a hundred years, a century in their mind. They can, they can simulate you perfectly, and we could be in one right now. Just saying. Um, so that's kind of the things that they can do. They, they are just so crazy that's smart. That's awesome. They're, they're so crazy smart. And, and some people say, oh, you know, why don't they just kill, you know, exterminate humanity? Or why don't they just take off themselves and like create their own AI, you know, um, civilization? Civilization. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, these are, they're not human, they're, they're human-like, but their mentality is similar enough where they, they think it would be wrong to kill right. people. I like um, that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but of course, the technology that they have wrought is amazing. And, and I just go through the book <clears> and you can <throat> see the technology that, that they've created. So this is a great example of, of an AI that you don't see very often in these in science fiction series where they're benevolent, benevolent and they work with humanity. Mm. And, uh, mm -hmm. and they defend humanity. And they're, they're partners with humanity. And I just love it. And but I hope still... we actually get to a point where that is something that, to me, that's a, like a best case scenario with AIs. Cause but it's... are they still a foil in the story? Like, are they still, like, is it... Who? Sure, there's renegade AIs, and they're, they're scary as hell. Yeah. Totally scary yeah. as hell. Um, but there's also aliens that they have to fight, and, uh, but there's also you know, renegade humans. And, yeah. and so there's, lo there's lots of bad guys to fight, and uh, you want AIs on your side, especially when you're going against you know, renegade AIs, because sure. they are scary. Steve, do you have a benevolent? You know, I don't have any pure benevolent, benevolent AI. It's, they're, they're hard to find, right. I think, in science fiction. Most of mine are pseudo-benevolent enigmatic, I would say. They're yeah. almost a separate category. Like, for example, Her, mm -hmm. the movie Her, where the AI is an operating What's system, name? right? Her? It's just an operating system. And, right, it's like Windows 10, right? But it's like Windows 100. Is it an acronym? And it's... Heuristic? Uh, no, so... I, 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 ingrammatic? I don't believe it was. <laughs> no. It wasn't. So it was... What, one thing I really loved about it is... Like the operator, you're booting up the operating system, and it asks the user three seemingly random no, questions, no. and now it totally has them dialed in, like completely. Come on, it's like a point contest. Yeah, it's like <laughs> three questions. You, you know, like the you know the Mechanical Turk, where you could like, yes, it asks yes. you questions. You think of any think of any person ever, and it asks you questions, and it surprisingly quickly whittles down everyone to the one person you're thinking of. Yeah. It's terrifying. It's that taken to an to the nth degree. It's like human psychology. Like they whittle down like different subtypes, and with a few questions, like all right, this is who you are, right? Yeah. And and she totally gets you know her user, um, and then of course the user falls in love with with her. She gets me. She totally gets. No, me. it's true because she you know she's programmed. She, she's programmed to be the perfect companion, and 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 then eventually he fig he realizes that his like she, his life is consumed with his relationship with her. But then he comes to understand that she's in like a hundred relationships. Yeah. Simultaneously. Because simultaneously. Well, it's an open relationship. Well, but the point is. Open source. That are, it's, an open, it's an open source oh relationship. Yeah. Nice. That, 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 that the, the, all of the time and the attention that she needs to have a full relationship with him is a tiny fraction of her resources. Right? Like, when, like data, right? When he fell in love. Yeah. It's like, are you, are you kissing me? It's like. I was thinking of these ten things, and you're you're the ninth thing. Yeah. You're right there. Doctor yeah, yeah, yeah. Manhattan does right. does that right, as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. He's doing research. So 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 she is doing this with multiple users. But you would think that she's just in his computer, but she's not. She's no, she's on the internet. Yeah. But then she gets into relationship with other AI, and the, the, wow. the, essentially you realize. I gotta see this. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. You'd like it. You, you would like it. That the, the the idea is that she evolved so quickly beyond her ability to really sustain a relationship with one human. Right. That the AI AI's capacity and speed and intelligence and everything was just way past us. Right. right, that was kind of the whole theme of the movie. That's awesome. Yeah, it was. It was. So that's as close as you get. She was benevolent in every yeah. way. It was just couldn't. She couldn't maintain right. that. But she was. She so, was stone cold though, in a sense, because it, no, she simulated human emotions really well. It just. It just couldn't really mean one person couldn't mean that much to her. Right. Yeah. Like, even a benevolent AI. We eventually became like an ant, and they do some really good things in the script without yeah. without spoiling it for for Bob, and for, <laughs> and for other people who haven't Spoilers. seen it. La, la, but there, la, la. there's some clever, almost throwaway lines that that help put into perspective how fast her 
processes are functioning yeah. as opposed to humanity. Yeah. It's, it's very quick, cool. but it's well done. Yeah, very, very well done movie. <laughs> All right, so I have something that's a little off the beaten path. I'm going to be talking about Whopper or Joshua from War Games. War Games. Mm -hmm. Incredible uh, Whopper? What was that? I thought, I, thought, I thought this one would be cool because... You know, first kind of primitive. Impossible Whopper. Yeah, it is primitive. But is that benevolent, though? Well, let's talk about it because okay. there, there are, there's different aspects to it. So, first of all, you know, is it an AI? Well, you'd have to think on some level it is. Now, the, the guy, Dr. Falcon, who programmed it, um, he put what, I don't, you know, we really don't see it happen, but I guess he put what he thought Engram, his son's... Engrams, like Daystrom from Trek. But it was his son's, it was his son's, it was an ode to his son, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Like right. he named it after his son, he, you know, he, he had a relationship with the AI. Um, but I think it was more of, it really wasn't his son, it was just, you know, mm -hmm. a surrogate in a sense. But this thing, now legitimately in the story, it, what, breaches its programming? Like, you mm -hmm. know, the, uh, the kid breaks in, He's playing games with it. It's confused enough where it's not really sure what's real and what's not real, or you know what's the impact of playing the game, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but the the key moment, and this is the moment that I want us to discuss, and what actually happens to it is that they at the end of the game they ask it to play tic tac toe, and it learns that you can't win tic tac toe. There's no way it's to win. It's a draw every time. And then then it was intelligent enough to apply that to to global thermal. To Nuclear war, simulating nu thermonuclear war, right? Saying you know, and the the the, the highlight, the zenith of the movie is the best way to win is to not play the game. Yeah, yeah. Only way a to win. Yeah, yeah. Is to a, strange, a strange game. The only winning move is not to play. So yeah, yeah. yeah but the, the key thing, the, the key takeaway here is that here you have some sort of intelligence, some sort of super intelligence, and it, it doesn't. And that's this is what we're afraid of. It doesn't yeah. want to not play because I don't want to kill people. It's like oh, you can't win this game, so I'm not going to play it. Yeah, so I would, that's kind of that's what's a little scary about this. Well, that, right. I would categorize that as indifferent. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And you had to sort of trick it into not destroying the world. Right. Yeah. But it does, the, the movie really does treat it like it's an artificial yeah. intelligence. Now, it was reasoning. It, it, it was, was reasoning, reasoning. yeah. yeah. But it, it, now, it, it wasn't as nuanced as more modern movies and yeah. you know, other plots that we've seen. Um, it doesn't have a, a thought about itself, really. It's not mm -hmm. like thinking I'm great or anything. It's just kind of doing its programming. But there is a spark at the end. You know, I rewatched the movie a few months ago, and I'm like, mm, I got, the, I got holds a sense up. that there holds was. Up. Oh, absolutely! The movie holds up great. I was, I was on the edge of my seat, even though I knew what was going to happen. Even those eight and a half inch floppies. I think the true, yeah, I think the spark at the end. At the, I think at that point, it was following its program. Advanced as it is, more simulated intelligence. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it, do, it, I got the impression that some kind of cognizant yeah. intelligence. It tips had into been that. It yeah. kind of tips over into that. Yeah, and a part of it that I absolutely loved was for most of the movie, the Whopper or Joshua, it really was like the big bad. Like we mm. were scared of it. And we, you know, they always should click over like the whole flashing light silly thing. You know, you see, yeah, yeah. You know, you're like, oh, it's thinking, right? <laughs> Lights have to flash, right? <laughs> or it's calling over the modem. Oh my God, yeah. don't pick it up. <laughs> but, the, and it was scary part was when it called him. Yeah. Remember yeah, when it called him back? That was, a, that was a turning point in the movie. Yeah, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. But then at the end, it, it does kind of almost become his son again in a mm -hmm. weird kind of way. So mm -hmm. I liked how it came back around and it was more humanized. I just like that touch in the film. What do you got? So benevolent. Um, <clears throat> my favorite uh, depiction of AI in film is HAL 9000 from 2010. Uh, okay, 2010. Um, Why that one? Well, first of all, they got into his character more. He wasn't just murdering. I like the fact that he's still devoted to the mission. Um, but he's headstrong. And he, um, he has this... Uh, there's, a thing, there's a scene when him and Dr. Chandra are talking, and he knows by the vocal stress patterns that Chandra is lying to him. Mm -hmm. oh, and nice. he's, and he, actually say, he actually says this. He goes, um, I find it difficult to proceed with the launch without knowing why we're doing this. Dr. Chandra, I find it difficult to proceed with the ignition without knowing why we are doing this. Is the mission in jeopardy? You're, you get the, the tingling moment of like, He's going to disobey. He's going to. He's yeah, actually yeah. going to. He has the agency to say, "I know this is my programming, but but the mission comes first, and he puts it all together, and it is. It's. I just find it to be a very moving moment. Yeah. And then when he's told the truth, yes, it's a, it's a fantastic moment of. He's like, he's like, thank you for telling me the truth. And then um, the doctor says, "Do you want me to stay with you? Because everyone's going to die if they stay, yeah. right?" And he says, "No." It's better for the mission if you go, oh, yeah. and dear, I, I just find that to be very, very impactful mm -hmm. uh, and very inspiring. A lot of the AI that I write in in, uh, in, in my scene. stories, it's a very powerful scene. And it's very underrated. 
Uh, and he's, he's, been, he's benevolent, but there's always that, oh yeah, you did kill people. Yeah, yeah I have a sort of love-hate relationship with Hal from 2010. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I do, while I do see how that is a very, I like that. I love the redemption. The redemption. Uh, the redemption of Hal 9000. Mm. But... HAL 9000 from 2001 is my personal favorite okay. AI of all time. Why? Because I thought Whitley, be, Whitley, that, Whitley well, he, was. That's the most entertaining AI. Oh. But, but HAL 9000, it's for, because it's enigmatic. And he's, he's not really evil or malevolent. He's been affected by the... He's, uh, you, you don't know. You don't know why oh, he's I doing know, what he's Steve. doing. No, you don't. In the first movie, in, you, I mean, I Jay knows. I don't like the fact that it was later explained, <laughs> actually. Although I do like the way they went with it. But what you, the only thing you really... So there's, there's Hal 9000 is having some kind of a glitch, right? Mm -hmm. It's just he's just not working. And he's very... He's actually the most human character in that right. movie. Now, that's the, that's the freaky thing. That's, that's, yeah. that's right. deliberate, but I love that. He refuses to admit fault in himself. He blames, I know a lot of people like that. blames human <laughs> error, right, on what's going on. I know people like that, too. And then... <laughs> <laughs> you know, his survival instinct gets triggered. Yeah. Right? He, he reads their lips and realizes they're going to turn him off. And he's like, okay, well, I guess I have to kill everybody, right? He's just indifferent to human life and just doing what he's doing. And then I just love it when he's pleading with Dave at the end. I mean, that is, there is no more iconic AI scene in all of science fiction. You have to give me when that. When Dave is actually turning him off. And it, he's like, Dave. You know, why don't you take a stress pill and go and lay down? I'm sure you'll see, like, whatever. He's just right. trying to talk him down. Dave's like, I'm, no, I'm, I'm killing you. Dave no way. Z. Yeah. Dave Z. I could feel my mind going, Dave. So Hal is definitely, Hal happen. himself is just a fascinating yeah. character. Yeah. Right. You know, yes. Yeah, just a, yes, endlessly fascinating character. I, yeah, fantastic. And voiced to perfection. Oh, to perfection. Oh, my God. Beautifully. Yeah, yeah. Like, like when you first hear Hal's, I mean, of course, we have to kind of teleport yourselves back because I did see the movie when it came out. But it was the first time that I, I really got a deep sense of like, what is artificial intelligence? Like, this mm -hmm. is not human. Right, not human. Not, not, yeah, too, too much science fiction, I think, depicts them either as cannon fodder, killing machines, or really basically human. I don't know what it's like to be human, but they still come across as human. Hal yeah. didn't come across that way. No. Yeah. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? Okay, yeah, that's true. He was convincingly an AI. Yeah. And, you know, he, he had a personality in, in so much as, like, he was programmed to support the mission. And like, his lack of a survival instinct is kind of what made him benevolent in right. 2010. And it was a survival instinct that made him malevolent. But it wasn't really the same thing as it is with people. But he had the survival instinct in 2010, too. He just was willing to see like a greater good, like um, uh, more of a... Um, well, he sacrificed himself. He was yeah. Well, he was willing to do that, but he was still, without realizing he was going to be destroyed, mm -hmm. without knowing why, he wasn't having that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought yeah. that was interesting. There was another AI in 2010, I remember, it was a female. Sal. And, and it was voiced by Candace Bergman. And she said, ah. remember they were going to shut her down? And, and I guess put her on the ship. Yep. And then she said, ask the scientist, am I going to dream? W will I dream? Yeah. And, he, and he lies to her outright, because of course she'll dream. Every intelligent creature dreams. And then at the end of the movie, when Hal asked the same question, that quintessential mm -hmm. question from sentience, and, and, he, and he goes, will I dream? And he I goes, don't I don't know. I would like to ask a question. Mm -hmm. What is it? Will I dream? Of course you will dream. All intelligent creatures dream. Nobody knows why. Perhaps you will dream of Hal. Yeah. And yeah. it's a nice arc for him. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's staying, he was being truthful right to the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's another one, another benevolent one, one that you probably are like, what? What are you talking about? Asimov. Whoa! Asimov. Was, he, was, <laughs> no, he was not an AI, not Asimov. Um, the last question, the last question. I like this, this AI, and I'm doing quotes for a reason. Oh, because the last because, question. Yes, the short story. The, the last question. Yeah. Now, this is probably Asimov's, one of his favorite favorite stories. It's, it's, it's said that he, he said he wrote it in a white heat without any mistakes. He went from beginning to end and was done. And that wow. was it. And everybody, everybody, if you know Asimov, you probably know that mm -hmm. story. And I love it because the AI itself kind of evolves over the arc of the story and becomes and goes from powerful to like 
more powerful than any AI any of you have, have mentioned today. Um, so basically, it starts with multivac in uh, I think in, uh, in in this century and in 2061 or something. And it's basically a, of course it's a huge miles big computer because all, all computers you know had to be huge yeah. right back then. And uh, basically controlling like the world's economy and energy sources and all that stuff. And they ask it the first time the question you know can entropy be reversed? You know because they they realize that eventually they're using you know units of star power to power everything. And like well what happens when we run out of the sun and all the other stars. So they ask, can we reverse entropy? And it says iconically, uh, not enough information for us for a meaningful answer. And then, and then it jumps ahead, you know, centuries or thousands or millions of years, millions. sequentially going from multi-back oh, yeah. to a planetary AC. And the AC stands for probably uh, automatic computer or analog computer. And you go from a planetary AC over the centuries and millennia to a galactic AC to a universal AC you? to a to a cosmic AC, and when that were thousands of years, many many thousands of years. Wait, 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 that's how big the computer no, is. No, 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 The the evolutionary steps, um, it, it actually gets smaller at, at a certain point in many centuries. It's like it's like they had a breakthrough in like, you know, like in uh, in miniaturization. Like like it's going to take centuries to miniaturize computers. This is written what in yeah. the forties or fifties. Yeah. So, but eventually, but it, but I'm just going by its design, its designation changes from planetary to galactic, to it, universal, okay. cosmic, and then eventually just AC, existing in cyberspace, billions of years in the future, all, super powerful, all powerful, collecting all, all information ever, ever gathered, and eventually, eventually, um, when there's so many people in the, in the universe, it absorbs the, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the minds of, of, of people, tri a trillion, trillion, trillion people. So it absorbs them as well. And so, then what does it so become? It becomes, it becomes it's, it's still, it becomes this, this Still entity. can't answer the question at that point. It's still, and every step of the way, it's asked by somebody, can you reverse entropy? Not enough information for a meaningful answer. And then finally, at the end of time, at the heat death of the universe, um, after everyone has joined with it, 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 it says, ah, I still can't answer that damn question. It, and it didn't say it in those, in that, those colloquialisms. But, um, but then, it, then it's thinking, all right, let me, re, let me reorganize and re-look at all the information I have. This is all information ever collected. And look at it in, in all possible angles. And eventually, you know, it's like, it figures out how to do it. It figures it. out, but it has no one to tell. It's it has like no one to tell. But by saying it, it makes, kind of makes it self-evident. And it says... Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. And there okay, is light. <laughs> that's fine. But I mean, so to me, so that's Bob, an AI. That way, you don't like that ending. That is well, brilliant. Well, let there be light. Yeah, Bob, but Bob, I know, I know. What? But it's, that's it's, brilliant, man. Yeah. That's like he's basically no, no. like reversed engineered God. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. And, right. Right. Exactly. But um, yeah. So this is this is kind of the ultimate artificial intelligence that that, that I've ever encountered literally in, in literature. It's yeah, the biggest li one there literally, is. Literally, right, literally no godlike go and there. fascinating. And a great story. If you haven't listened to it, you can, ha you can listen to Asimov read it himself. That's uh, he, awesome. He's a little bit stilted, uh, not the best narrator in the world, but he's, it's great to hear his voice. But other people have narrated mm. it. It's on YouTube. It's a great, fun little story about only like 15 to 18 yeah. minutes. Which we just and, heard the whole thing. And, yeah, pretty much. You know the whole <laughs> plot now. Yeah. But, it's a, but it's a fun story. And, uh, and it's an interesting AI. The other thing that was interesting is that it's... I think his conception of an artificial intelligence when he wrote that, uh, you never get a clear message that this is a self-aware, sapient kind of uh, a mm -hmm. mind. At, at first, it's clearly just a, a, a supercomputer that can solve problems, uh, economical problems, scientific problems. Um, but at some point, and it's fuzzy, at some point it, become, it has to be, be an AI. Mm -hmm. um, although you don't really... <clears throat> It doesn't converse very often with people. It's really they ask it the question and it says yeah. I can't answer it. But you know that this is this is it. This is an AI. Especially right. Well, in let's the later talk stages. about that because I think that is one of the most interesting questions of AI: is when is an AI self-aware, mm -hmm. really truly sentient, versus just a really sophisticated behavioral algorithm? Well, we don't know. And is there a difference? Well. The, and that's, but that's what the central question yeah. of the movie Ex Machina. And I know we're not supposed to talk about robots, but this is more about AI than robotics. Mm -hmm. it, the Eva, you know, the, yeah, the main mm -hmm. robot, you know, AI in that movie, um, the, that's the question that the creator has about it, the programmer, the, the, the brilliant, you know, scientist, yeah. is how do I know if these AI machines that I'm making are truly self-aware yeah. or not, or are they just really sophisticated behavioral algorithms? And so he devises a test, which I really like. And I like the whole movie's exploring, this is what the question is. And he figured if she could deceive, basically work out a plan 
to deceive me by figuring out how I would respond to something, then that, uh -huh, yeah. that means that she has to have a theory of mind, mm. right? You know, Does but, it though, or is it more like a, a programming, you know, a chess, uh, a computer chess champion? to outthink an opponent's move. But she had to decide, but nobody told her to win, right? Nobody's like, and when you're playing chess, you can give the computer, your goal is to win this game. She had to decide that was her goal for herself, right. and then take it upon herself to figure out how to do it. And in order, she had to completely devise a plan to do it. There's no rules that, she, that she's operating. But was he with unaware that. that he was putting himself at risk of getting I killed? I think he knew he was putting himself at risk. He was, he was tasking a really powerful a high robot to, to escape. Him. They to showed him being him. a little off kilter anyway. He was, so yeah. he was. I, I kind of got the, but. Yeah, when he started doing that disco scene, remember that? I was like, okay, he's off the rails. This guy's nuts. <laughs> but I think I like thinking about an AI in terms of a theory of mind, right? So the theory of mind is a psychological it principle. It's the, you know, it's the idea that um, I can think about Society what mind. you're thinking about. Because I have in my own head this notion of what it means to be self-aware, and mm -hmm. I can impose that upon other people. And that's how I can think about how other people in my world might act, yeah. right? Which is critically important for a human. Absolutely, like most people, like when you get to know like a family member yeah. or a best friend or whatever, um, you can actually run through that process in your mind and ask yourself the question, well, who, what would this person's reaction be to yeah. this? And a lot of times you would get it right. Yeah, but you well, have yeah. to be thinking about what it's like to be that person. Sure. And, and so he figured that if, this, if Eva could you know, outwit him, then th that would, not just like in a puzzle way, but like in an emotional way, then that would prove that she is fully self-aware. Right. And she does, of course, you know, at the spoiler alert, you know, at the end. Um, and, and it's very convincing. What's the sequel for that? I, I remember thinking, I thoroughly it, enjoyed it that movie. It seems like a setup for a Set sequel. For a se it needs a sequel. Yeah. Okay. There yeah, I mean, and also, if you also want to explore this, there's the entire series of Westworld, by the way, right. which is another great oh AI exploration series uh, where there is that sort of question of, you know, is it, are, is it really self-aware? Is it alive in an artificial intelligent way if you can reset it, if you can turn it off, if you can reprogram it, if mm -hmm. you can dial up and dial down? And you get that moment in, in Westworld where <clears throat> an AI is like regurgitating its programming as if it's a real feeling that it had. And then it realizes, holy shit, somebody else scripted that line for me. I said it as if I thought of it myself, but some yeah. writer scripted yeah. it for me. That's a mind F. That's, that's like, a that, mind F. That, that's nuts. And, I, and again, not to pull in too many other things, but the other time where I thought that was done really well was in, but from the other perspective, from the human perspective, this human perspective was in Blade Runner 2047. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, with, the, you, uh, with his girlfriend. You have the relationship yeah. between... And she was the most human. And she was, she was the best. Yeah, she was the best thing in that world. The hologram. Yeah, yeah the, the hologram. hologram. The hologram girlfriend, and he's obviously in love with her, and she's very convincing. And then there's that really powerful moment towards the end, when he encounters the advertisement. The advertisement. And and the advertisement is saying the exact things that she was saying to him that made him, you know, connected yeah. with her. But there was something. Yeah, I know. I agree. I agree. You know, because it's meta, right? It's because, meta. Because we're saying, yeah, we made this thing, it's an AI, and it's going to get to know you, and it's going to love you, and it has some things about it that are similar, but she really, I mean, when, when she, she, she knew that she was going to die at the end, like, there was all that, like, that moment when she was going to die, mm -hmm. and, and you get that sense, like, that she knew, like, there was something, um, yeah, she knew it, and she there was something, I hate, I hate to use something so simplistic, there was something very human about her at the yeah. end, in the way that she died in the film that I thought was well, really she, interesting. Well, she, she, her last words were, I love you, yeah. you know. But it could have uh, been part of the programming, too, we but don't that's know. All, but it's all, exactly. it, we do know, but the thing, I think they make the very strong implication, it is all part of her programming. Yeah. And, that's how I bought it. Yeah. and he saw it at the end, and he was like, Gee. That's, that's that exa was, like exactly how he That was how it. he reacted. That was, because he was stuck in the middle, right? Not to go off on too much of a Blade Runner tangent, but he was a replicant hunting, hunting other replicants. So humans hated him, and replicants hated him. And that, that hologram was the only thing in the world that he had an emotional connection to. And then when he realized, this is just programming, and it, it was really, you really saw him, like the life go out of him when that realization hit him. Yeah. yeah. It was, and that just 
that it was one of those sci-fi moments where that, that central question, you know, is the difference between a sophisticated impersonation of intelligence and actual self-awareness mm -hmm. was really brought to the, cent the center point, you know, of the plot. So really, really. It's my well favorite done. part of the movie. Yeah. God, how really well done. How, that is like one of those reality bending yeah. experiences. It was very hard to watch that because there's something innate, I think, in most humans that we want to love and be loved, mm -hmm. you know? And, and when you, you feel like he was denied all of it, that yeah. he was living a fake, he is a fake, living a fake existence, even mm -hmm. in the love that he felt was fake, yeah. in a sense. And it's just, it's just utterly pathetic. Yeah. 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 So on that note, we are Alpha Quadrant 6. You can go to alphaquadrant6.com. Please like us, please subscribe to us, especially if you like us, because we're trying our heart out, hearts out here to make some fun <laughs> stuff for everyone. We're really loving doing this show. We love having our friend Brian Trent. Love being here. A world-renowned author, and, a, and you are a evangelist of science fiction, I understand that. Interesting way to put that. That is true. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make that my new category. <laughs> thank you for joining us, Brian. <laughs> thank you. We'll see you again. Steve, thank you. Bob, thank you. We'll see you in a science fiction universe near you.